Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The sickle scaler is the most commonly used scaler in dental hygiene practice. Sickle scalers are held with a modified pen grasp and a fulcrum is maintained at all times. Like all other dental hygiene instruments, sickle scalers have a handle, a shank, which is usually heavier than on other instruments and may be straight or modified, and a working end. The sickle scaler has two main uses. It is used for the removal of heavy supramarginal or supragingival calculus, and its second use is for the removal of subgingival calculus, one to two millimeters below the margin of the gingiva only in areas where the tissue is very inflamed and easily distended from the tooth surface. There are two basic sickle scaler designs. The first is the curved sickle scaler. Looking at the graphic, you can see an illustration of the curved sickle scaler. The curved sickle scaler has two cutting edges on a curved blade. The facial surface, which lies between the cutting edges, is flat in cross-section and curved lengthwise. The facial surface converges with the two lateral surfaces to form the tip of the scaler, which is a sharp point. In cross-section, you can see that the curved sickle scaler is triangular. The sharp back surface and pointed working end of the curved sickle scaler do not allow it to be inserted to the epithelial attachment without causing trauma to the tissue. For this reason, the sickle scaler can be used only to remove supragingival deposits or deposits that extend only slightly below the margin of the gingiva. I'd like to show you the curved sickle scaler. You can see the curved or semicircular shape of the sickle scaler. Its sharp point the facial surface, and the two cutting edges, one cutting edge on each side. You will notice that the curved sickle scaler is a very heavy instrument. It has a relatively short shank, but a relatively long working end. In using the curved sickle scaler intraorally, we use only the anterior approximately four millimeters of the working end. This, this sickle scaler is used only for the removal of gross supragingival deposits on the anterior teeth. I'd like to demonstrate the use of the curved sickle scaler on the typodont. Remember that your curved sickle scaler comes to a sharp point. Like all pointed instruments, you will have to be very conscious of instrument adaptation that is keeping the point or the tip of the instrument closely adapted to the tooth surface. Holding the instrument with your modified pen grasp, establish a firm fulcrum. Place the anterior portion of the working end of the instrument, the anterior approximately four millimeters, against the tooth surface. Now be very careful that the tip is adapted and see if I move the instrument so that I'm using more than that four millimeter portion. The tip of the instrument is right into the interproximal space. Once it is adapted, make sure that you are at working angulation. The instrument should be placed so that it is less than 90 but more than 45 degrees against the tooth surface. And then use short, overlapping, pull strokes, moving in toward the interproximal space, rotating the instrument to keep it closely adapted with the tooth surface. Let me show you that again. A very short portion of the anterior section of the working end adapted very closely to the tooth surface using short overlapping working strokes.
When you have gone approximately halfway across the interproximal surface, you would stop, turn your instrument, and begin to work toward the other interproximal surface. The second type of sickle scaler is the straight sickle scaler. Looking at the graphic, you can see that the straight sickle scaler has two cutting edges on a straight blade. The facial surface is flat and converges with the two lateral surfaces to form the tip of the scaler, which is a sharp point. In cross-section, the straight sickle scaler, like the curved sickle scaler, is triangular. Looking at the instrument, you can see that it is much shorter than the curved sickle scaler. It has a sharp point. The face of the instrument lies between the two cutting edges. The straight sickle scaler is also used for scaling supermarginal deposits on the anterior teeth as well as submarginal deposits one to two millimeters submarginally. I'd like to show you the use of the straight sickle scaler on the typodont. Basic principles for use of the straight sickle scaler are identical to those of the curved sickle scaler. We use only the anterior portion of our working end and are very careful to adapt the tip of the instrument to the tooth surface. The instrument is, dis is inserted under the deposit at approximately 45 to 90 degrees. Beginning at the midline on your, on your facial surface, Begin your working strokes, short, overlapping pull strokes, being careful to adapt the tip as you go around into the interproximal space. Be very careful to be sure that your tip is adapted and is not sticking in to the interproximal space, lacerating the tissue. In order to use a sickle scaler on the posterior interproximal spaces for the removal of supragingival calculus, you would need to have an instrument with a modified shank. The modified sickle scaler is a variation of your straight sickle scaler. It has a curved shank to allow for access to the posterior area. The modified sickle scaler is a paired instrument. We must have the mirror image instruments in order to do all posterior areas of the mouth. I would like to demonstrate the selection of the proper end of the modified sickle scaler and the use of the modified sickle scaler on the typodont. The modified sickle scaler, because of its curved shank, is made to adapt to the posterior teeth. Select the proper working end by adapting the portion of the shank nearest the working end so that it is parallel with the long axis of the tooth. If you look at the instrument, you can see that when placed on this mesial surface, a small portion of the shank is parallel with the long axis of the tooth. This instrument will be in the same position when placed on the distal of the tooth. The basic use of the instrument is the same as is in the anterior tooth, making sure that the tip is closely adapted, that we are at working angulation of 45 to 90 degrees, and then using short, overlapping, vertical strokes. On the mesial, and again on the distal. Now, let me remind you that it's very, care it's very important to make sure that your tip is adapted to the tooth surface can see that the tip in this view is right into the interproximal tissue. Be sure to rotate your instrument so that the tip is closely adapted to the tooth surface to avoid laceration. 
Let me just show you what the wrong end of this instrument would look like. This is the wrong end of the sickle scaler. You can see that the shank is not parallel with the long axis of the tooth. And if you could see it in this shot, it would be very difficult because of the curvature of the shank, you would see that the blade of the instrument would be right into the tissue. The same if I used it on this surface. In order to get correct angulation, I would have to bring my hand back until I had the tip of the instrument going right into the apex of the, t of the uh, sulcus. The proper end is with the portion of the shank parallel with the long axis of the tooth. Let me demonstrate now the use of these sickle scalers intraorally. The first instrument I'd like to demonstrate in the mouth is the curved sickle scaler. Holding your instrument with your modified pen grasp, place your fulcrum firmly, then using only the anterior portion of the instrument, being careful to keep the tip closely adapted to the tooth surface. Use short, overlapping, working strokes, turning the instrument so that the tip is very close to the tooth surface as you go into the inner proximal. If you do not have your tip adapted, you can see that we have a very small area, and if the tip isn't adapted, you're going to be right into the gingival tissue. So turn the instrument, use just a very, very small portion of the anterior part of the working end. And you'll turn your instrument and work toward the opposite in a proximal space. If you look at the back of the, of the instrument, you can see it turning as I move it to adapt. The straight sickle scaler is used basically the same way. We have a smaller working end but we still place only the very anterior portion of the working end against the tooth surface. Using short, overlapping, pull strokes, rotating the instrument carefully in our fingertips to keep the tip adapted to the tooth surface. And going all the way into the far interproximal space. Again, watch the back of the instrument to see it rotated. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.